Hey, this is Stevie Richards along with the BWO Blue World Order. You're watching Wrestling with Regret. What? What is this? Who? Wrestling with Regret? Oh, he, he's the guy that Taz DM when he got mad when he made fun of him in the video. That guy. Taz got mad about something? Yes, oh, he, no did. Way. he did. He did. He DM'd him. When would you ever think oh. you would hear the words, Taz DM me on Twitter? Well, 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 <laughs> well, who knew? Oh, Taz is going to see this. He's going like to be mad at us. I like Taz. Yeah. He plays Madden. Hello everyone, it's time for a special Saturday morning edition of Animation Month. There aren't too many wrestlers out there who are more synonymous with the 1980s and therefore many of our childhoods than Hulk Hogan. That decade truly belonged to the Hulkster as his huge success in the WWF permeated through all of pop culture. From film appearances to workout programs to TV shows, Hogan was everywhere. And nowhere will you find a bigger example of Hogan's crossover appeal than with Hulk Hogan's Rockin' Wrestling, a Saturday morning cartoon that ran on CBS from 1985 to 1986. Airing during the peak of the Rockin' Wrestling connection, this show has developed quite the cult following and has been one of my most requested topics for Animation Month. So sit down in front of your TV set with a big bowl of cereal, because we're about to get nostalgic, brother! On this show, Hogan leads the group of baby faces that's comprised of Junkyard Dog, Jimmy Snuka, Hillbilly Jim, Andre the Giant, Tito Santana, Lou Albano, and Wendy Richter. Meanwhile, the evil Roddy Piper hangs out with fellow heels Iron Sheik, Nikolai Volkov, Big John Studd, Mr. Fuji, and the fabulous Moolah. How can you root against those guys when they're so outnumbered? Here's a little nugget of trivia for you. In the cartoon's early promotional material, Moolah was nowhere to be seen. In fact, the female heel of the show was meant to be Mad Maxine, an Amazon of a wrestler with a short-lived WWF tenure. Legend has it that Moolah politicked her way into the cartoon and bumped her former protege out. But in her defense, that's probably only the ninth or tenth sleaziest thing Moolah ever did in her career. One of the most iconic parts of this show is the opening credits. That song used to be Hulk Hogan's theme before Real American, and was one of the tracks featured on the wrestling album, which also featured Real American before that became Hogan's theme. Don't think too hard about that one. What's even more interesting about this song, other than the fact it borrows heavily from Eye the Tiger, is that it would be later tweaked, given lyrics, and re-released in 1986 as the backing instrumentals for Bonnie Tyler's Ravishing. It's so ravishing. Inexplicably, Rick Rude never came out to that song. Just look at the cool vehicle scene on this show. The Hulkmobile, Piper's Hot Rod, the Junk Wagon. Man, this show is practically begging for a toy deal. I think we take for granted the fact that these animated features I've been covering this month include the authentic voice acting from actual WWE stars because we get none of that here. It's Granny's own blend of miracle herbs. I guess the thief got away with the jewel after all. Hey, Andre! I saved you a seat! After you, Comrade Mullah! Oil slick shooter is not working good yet, Piper's house. A few more days, but the Hulkster diet I'm gonna be history! God, that Albano voice is worse than mine, and mine's terrible! That being said, this cast is sort of a who's who of vocal talent for the time. Hogan was voiced by Brad Garrett, who would go on to find his greatest success on Everybody Loves Raymond. JYD was voiced by James Avery, aka Uncle Phil, aka the voice of Shredder. Jimmy Snuka was voiced by the father of one of the greatest WCW champions of all time, Louis Arquette. And Charlie Adler, the voice of Buster Bunny from Tiny Toons and Ickes from Ah Real Monsters, lent his golden pipes to Roddy Piper. The best I can say about that role is, um, he got the nervous laugh down. All my anti-junk wagon devices are ready to go. <laughs> it's Hollywood for Rowdy Roddy Piper. <laughs> On this show, Hogan shares a single apartment with all of his friends, which seems odd for the biggest star in wrestling to do. You can tell this takes place early in Hogan's main event run because he actually shares a lot of story focus and overall screen time with the other wrestlers. In fact, he barely shows up in the first episode of this cartoon that bears his name. And when he is on screen, he's way less protected than his real-life counterpart. I didn't say I was gonna do it. I suppose I could always find a real man like Roddy Piper. That weasel face fake! Flo, Hulkster's kind of a loose cannon on this show. Now you've made the Hulk mad! Mad! <laughs> 
Each of the good guys have their own special quirks. Tito Santana says something in Spanish every fourth or fifth word. Hillbilly Jim always walks around with a menagerie. Lou Albano always eats. <laughs> Get it? Because he's fat. And Junkyard Dog makes constant references to the theme song he used to have before Vince Society didn't want to pay for the rights anymore. And another one bites dust. And another one bites dust. Mm, mm, mm. And another one cleans the dust. The format of the show was never really set in stone. Sometimes they'd have two 15-minute titles, sometimes they'd have a single 30-minute one. Sometimes they incorporated non-sequitur live-action skits with the real wrestlers, sometimes they wouldn't. As far as the storylines go, it's pretty standard Saturday morning fare. A car race between the faces and heels, junkyard dog creates a robot, the wrestlers clean Mean Gene's house, the gang runs a hotel, Andre pretends to be a French pastry chef to impress his mother, Hogan and Iron Sheik have to survive together on a desert island, you know, the usual stuff. In one episode, the gang has to protect a girl and her horse from some shady dudes. It turns out the baddies were jewel thieves, and they were after the horse because she ate the jewels that they stole. Come on, baby. Love up the diamonds. Uh, realistically, they probably have to wait a day or two to get those back. The writing's cheesy and one-dimensional, but hey, it's a cartoon designed for sugar-loaded kids, so I can't knock them for that. However, I will say that the animation for this show was very crude, at least in Season 1. Think of some of the other animated shows that ran during this time. Muppet Babies, Gummy Bears, The Snorks, Alan and the Chipmunks, I don't remember any of them being this bad. But I digress. In summation, if you enjoy the cheesy, nostalgic cartoon chaos of the 1980s, this is definitely for you. You won't find depth of character or story in the level of Adventure Time or Steven Universe, but it's perfect for eating some bootios in your slippers and jammies on a Saturday morning. I would tell you to watch it on the network, but it's been scrubbed ever since the Hulkster was unpersoned back in 2015. You can still find it on VHS for those of you who still have VCRs, and of course you can easily find the bulk of the episodes on YouTube to satisfy your curiosity. Be sure to thumbs up this video if you like it, comment below, subscribe to Wrestling With Regret, and buy the t-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com. I'm Brian Zane, and I'll see you next time.